Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is a statement by Keith Brown on an update on major infrastructure projects. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement. If anybody wishes to ask a question, I would encourage them to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Keith Brown. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to provide Parliament with an update on some major infrastructure projects, and in particular the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route Balmeri to Tipperty project, uh, more commonly referred to as the AWPR. The AWPR is the longest new roads project under construction in the UK, and is also the equivalent of building a new road between Edinburgh and Glasgow. When complete, it will provide substantial benefits across the whole of the North East, boosting the economy, increasing business and tourism opportunities, improving safety and cutting congestion, as well as improving opportunities for public transport facilities. The AWPR contract was awarded in December 2014 to Aberdeen Roads Limited, or ARL, a joint venture comprising Balfour Beatty, Carillion and Galliford Tri. When I attended the Rural Economy and Connectivity Committee on the 24th of January, I advised that the intention at that time remained to open the road in the spring, but that the date could not be guaranteed. Since then, officials have been closely engaging with ARL to determine likely delivery dates for the project. So it was surprising when Balfour Beatty, one of the partners forming ARL, revealed in its 2017 full year results on the 14th of March this year that the project, in their view, would be complete in summer 2018. Consequently, I instructed officials to arrange an urgent meeting with ARL on Thursday the 15th of March to seek clarity on the views expressed by Balfour Beatty. Transport Scotland met with ARL's contractor last Thursday. At that meeting, ARL were asked to formally confirm its position on its intended completion date. On Monday evening this week, Transport Scotland received that confirmation. Officials instructed their technical advisors to validate the information in order that I could provide clarity to communities and businesses in the Northeast on the timescale for completion of this project. Yesterday, I received confirmation that this exercise has been concluded and will now provide an update to Parliament. ARL has confirmed to Transport Scotland that its target is to open the roads during August 2018. The contractor has cited delays which it attributes to factors including the cumulative effects of weather events on the project, such as Storm Frank in 2015, and delays in relation to the timing of public utility diversions. And in relation to that last issue, I would advise that Aberdeen Roads Limited Roads Limited is maintaining a claim against the Scottish Government through which it's seeking to recover substantial costs. Disputes, of course, are not unusual in contracts of this nature, and we're working with ARL to understand the basis of its claim. An additional complicating factor has arisen from the collapse of Carillion, one of the joint venture partners. As would be expected in such a situation, Carillion's liquidation has had significant impacts across the UK. <coughs> Delivery of projects such as the Royal Liverpool Hospital and the Midland Metropolitan Hospital have been significantly impacted. As I understand it, new contractors are being considered to complete these projects. In contrast, the contract used for AWPR made provision for such a scenario, with the remaining construction partners, Balfour Beatty and Galliford Tri, being jointly and severally liable for the delivery of the project. Although I am aware from representations made by third parties that there have been supply chain impacts on AWPR in relation to the Carillion situation, I am also aware, however, that the remaining construction partners are continuing to work through such issues to ensure that confidence in the North East supply chain is maintained. And as I announced in February, it is positive that the remaining construction partners on the AWPR have been able to take on over 90% of the former Carillion employees on the project. I said that the contractor has confirmed that its target is now, open, is now to open the roads during August 2018. Transport Scotland has evaluated the information received from the contractor together with its own independent assessments undertaken by their technical advisors. I have been advised that the conclusion of this work is that there is effectively a range of dates when the project roads are likely to be ready to open. The earliest that all roads can realistically be open is likely to be towards the end of the summer period, which accords with the contractor's August estimate. Transport Scotland advisors have indicated, however, that they consider that ARL's August estimate is based on somewhat aggressive programming with limited contingency. So whilst I welcome the efforts being made by the contractor to secure as early an opening as possible, I've been advised that it's prudent to anticipate the potential for a late autumn 2018 opening date for all project roads. 
However, we are also establishing whether any further measures can be implemented to ensure that the project is not only delivered at the earliest opportunity, but also to identify if sections of new road can be opened in advance of the whole project. Where that is possible, without impacting on the timetable for completion of the project itself, we will, of course, ensure that roads are opened. As with all complex civil engineering contracts of this scale, uh, delivery and completion of certain elements of work are dependent on a variety of factors, including weather, scheduling of other works, and availability of specialist resource. In fact, in the last couple of weeks, we have seen the impact of weather in the local area on the project. As a result of these factors, it's not possible at this point to confirm the exact completion date for these works at this time. In terms of the contract, project programming and delivery are the responsibility of the contractor. The main payment mechanism for the project is through a unitary charge. In effect, payments are directly linked to the roads becoming open for public use. ARL is therefore contractually incentivised to complete the project efficiently, whilst of course being obliged to comply with safety requirements. The total scheme cost estimate is £745 million and this remains unchanged. The project is estimated, estimated to generate over £6 billion for the local economy with an anticipated 14,000 new jobs to follow over the first 30 years after the opening. Once open, the AWPR will cut congestion in and around Aberdeen City, reducing emissions and improving active travel. It will also improve connectivity in the region and provide better journey time reliability, particularly for those travelling from the north of the city to the south side. Presiding officer, a route around Aberdeen was first proposed over 65 years ago, and since the legal challenges to the project were set aside in 2012, we have been working hard to deliver this essential project. While I appreciate, of course, that residents and businesses of the North East would wish it to be open as soon as possible, I can assure them that they will enjoy considerable benefits when the AWPR opens, and that will also be at the soon as possible opportunity. I'd also like to take the opportunity to provide a brief update on the other major trunk road projects across Scotland. On the A9 duelling programme following the completion of the section between Kincraig and Dalradi, the Lunkerty to Pass of Burnham section is expected to be awarded in the first half of this year. We also expect advance works to start on there later this month. Following the recent publication of draft orders for schemes representing 30 of the 80 miles to be duelled, I can advise that we now expect to publish draft orders for a further four duelling schemes in the coming months. Of course, the A9 duelling is not just about building roads. Just last week, my colleague, the Cabinet Secretary for Finance and the Constitution, Derek Mackay, attended the launch of an A9 tourism app, which has been taken forward as part of the Scottish Government's innovative CivTech challenge, which looks to new technology businesses to solve technological challenges. And this app will help tourists navigate the many visitor attractions and facilities in and around the A9 corridor. On the A96 duelling Inverness to Aberdeen programme, uh, design work continues. The work we are progressing includes a rolling programme of regular engagement with local communities and other stakeholders to ensure those affected by the work are kept fully informed. It will also ensure the vital feedback we receive is taken into account as we develop our plans. To date, more than 11,500 people have visited public engagement events on the A96 duelling. And along with our commitment to duel the A9 between Perth and Inverness by 2025, duelling the A96, of course, will ensure that the road network between all Scottish cities is of dual carriageway standard at least by 2030. So I trust that this gives Members of Parliament an indication of the extensive work that's currently underway across the country to bring forward these critically important trunk road schemes building connectivity, improving access to opportunities like education, jobs and tourism, and of course, to improving safety across Scotland's trunk road network. And with that, President Officer, I'm happy to try and answer any questions from members. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. And we start with Dean Lockhart. Uh, thank you very much. And I thank the Cabinet Secretary for an advanced copy of his statement. The announcement of yet another delay to the AWPR will come as a massive disappointment to the people of the North East. This is a project that has already been significantly delayed. With an original completion date of spring 2017, we have now heard repeated announcements of delays from the Cabinet Secretary. First, it was a delay from spring 2017 to spring 2018 because of Storm Frank in 2015. Then it was a delay from spring 2018 to summer 2018 for reasons unknown. We now have a further delay, but the statement itself isn't clear whether the latest completion date will be August 2018 
or late autumn 2018, the statement refers to both and is unclear. With this background, I have the following questions for the Cabinet Secretary. What is the latest completion date that he can guarantee? Is it August 2018 or late autumn 2018? And does this really mean winter 2018? Does the latest delayed completion date mean the route will be fully operational or will this opening be subject to snagging and other issues? And does the Cabinet Secretary share our concerns about the impact this further delay will have on the people and businesses in the North East? Cabinet Secretary. I can say, first of all, that the basis of uh, Dean Lockhart's question is wrong. There was never a date provided of spring 2017. If he can prove to me that there was a date for spring 2017, I'd be interested to look at that. The first date that I uh, am aware of was the one uh, made by the former First Minister, which was spring 2018. Uh, it is true to say that, of course, uh, Balfour Beatty, not the Scottish Government, had recently talked about summer this year. I didn't uh, mention that. I mentioned that we believe, that, for the reasons I mentioned in my statement, that we expect it to be late autumn uh, this year. And the reasons, uh, I've given the reasons, partly to do uh, with weather. I went to visit the road recently, and if you looked at the uh, bridge affected by Storm Frank, people in that location will tell you that was weather they had never seen in decades previously. That had a major impact uh, on the project. And, of course, more recently, other weather. Also, in relation to Carillion, two of the projects which I mentioned have stopped completely and are years, likely to be years behind uh, schedule. That was the effect on Carillion. Now, that's not happened in relation to this project, but it has had an impact. I understand that point, and that's been mentioned uh, by the contractor. So those are the reasons. And I have said uh, uh, the exact same thing in terms of the uh, fourth crossing. We can't guarantee these things. We have to work with the contractor. What I'm saying is I do not want to just pass on what the contractor has said in this regard of saying they expect to finish in August, September this year. I believe, based on the advice from my officials, they think it may be uh, late uh, autumn. Uh, and I've given the reasons why they expect that to be the case. And also, in relation to snagging, I don't think the member fully understands the basis of these projects. Snagging is typical of all major construction contracts. It happens afterwards. And to specifically answer the point raised by the member, yes, when I say opening, what I'm referring to is the roads open and available for use. Of course, that's still possible that snagging will continue after that. It's fairly standard, but I'm talking about the roads being open and available for use. And just one last point on delays. Labour and Conservative councillors raised this issue, this issue in the local council in 1948. That's when the Labour Party and Tory Party first talked about it. Malcolm Bruce first raised the issue when he was elected in 1983. This is a government which is delivering the scheme and people in the North East know that the SNP government is the one that will deliver. Jackie Bailey. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm not old enough to remember that, but we've had 10 minutes from the Cabinet Secretary and not one mention, not one, of the rights of workers employed on the Aberdeen Western peripheral route. Last week, Labour raised allegations of bullying and harassment of the workforce on the project, the breach of agency workers' regulations, health and safety staff ignored, and a subcontractor who had deployed gangmasters in the past. So I'd be interested to know what action the Cabinet Secretary has taken. And at First Minister's questions, we raised the use of umbrella companies and bogus self-employment. The First Minister said it was a matter of choice. Well, it's not a choice if you struggle to pay your mortgage. It's not a choice if you don't get sick pay. And it's certainly not a choice when you don't have a decent pension. So what action is the Cabinet Secretary taking to ensure that Scottish taxpayers' money is not used to exploit Scottish workers? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, had uh, Jackie Bailey listened to, uh, to all of my statement, I did mention, of course, the fact that many of the employees of Carillion had been taken on by the two other contractors. And the Scottish Government was very active in making sure that was the case. Uh, so 90%, in fact, more than that, I think, were taken on by the uh, other contractors. Not the situation in other contracts, contracts I could mention in the UK where the collapse of Carillion has meant that the project itself has stopped. So I think that does demonstrate, uh, of course, the concern we have uh, for employees on this project. And also, over the years of this construction, project, a number of issues have been raised with me and every single one of those we've taken up Many times it's turned out not to be true, the allegations which are made, but on those occasions where it has, we have both investigated and taken action in relation to that. Some of the issues which she raises, of course, relate to First Minister's questions. The First Minister made the point that those contract, those 
employees who sought instead to work through an agency rather than be directly employed. That was their choice to make that decision. They had the choice to do one or the other. That's the point that she made. But in relation to abolishing things like zero hours contract or taking action on employment law, Jackie Bailey knows full well, even if Richard Leonard pretends not to, that the Labour Party themselves were instrumental in making sure that employment law stayed with the Conservatives. In fact, you said during the Smith Commission it was crucial it was crucial that it remained with the Conservatives. Had you wished us to have the means to deal with these issues rather than complain about them? In fact, you begin to wonder whether that wasn't the whole intention behind Labour's position, to keep it there so they continue to have a go at the Scottish Government, even though it's the UK Government that has the powers for it. So I do know that some members of the Labour Party not represented here today regret that decision. I certainly regret it. I would like to have the control over employment law to allow us to deal more robustly with some of these things. And perhaps in future, the Labour Party would do what Richard Leonard failed to do at First Minister's questions and say that he will support the devolution of employment law to Scotland. Well, and Gillian Martin to be followed by Jamie Green. Gillian Martin. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to ask Cabinet Secretary what impact today's announcement will have on the Balmedy to Tipperty dueling project in my constituency. And I note that in the Cabinet Secretary's statement, he made references to certain sections of road to be open as they are ready. Has he been given any indication by Aberdeen Roads as the progress of stretches of the, of the project and um, have they given any indication of which stretches in particular they can anticipate opening ready um, earlier um, and how will they be communicating that to road users in the area and their MSPs? Keith Brown. Uh, well, can I say to the member that I know that she's followed the project very closely and she will be aware, of course, that, for example, Crabeston and Dice Junctions were open to traffic ahead of schedule in August 2016. And I've also said to, to the Rural um, Economy Committee that uh, as other roads may be opened, of course, we will advise uh, members of that. We have tried to respond to every inquiry that's made. A number of members here, I see Peter Chapman's made a number of uh, inquiries about this. I've tried to respond to those as quickly and as fully as possible. I do understand the point being made uh, by Julie Martin that um, Obviously, local members will want to have the latest possible information. I undertake to make sure Transport Scotland their officials are here as well uh, to make sure that happens. We have been working closely with the contractor to ensure that the impacts on this have been mitigated as best they can, but we're also establishing whether further mitigation measures can be put in place to ensure the project is not only delivered as soon as possible, but that we can open other sections of New Road as soon as they're able to do that. Thank you. Jamie Green to be followed by Lewis MacDonald. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, we FOI'd email correspondence and minutes of meetings between the Cabinet Secretary and Scott Shaw, the AWPR project manager, over the last 12 months on this very specific issue of completion date. And the response here from Transport Scotland uh, states that that information is not available because there were no meetings in which minutes were taken in the last 12 months and not a single email was exchanged on the matter. The Cabinet Secretary just said that he was surprised to learn about the delayed completion date from Balfour Beatty. I'm surprised that he's surprised. Does the Cabinet Secretary not speak to Balfour Beatty on a regular basis? So can I ask, therefore, can I ask Mr Byrne, what are the communication lines like between himself, ARL, Balfour Beatty, and the project manager? Are they positive, forthcoming, and regular? And do they reflect a well-managed project? Because I don't think so. Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, perhaps the same questions could be asked of the two projects uh, in England which have been completely stopped by, of course, the collapse of Carillion, but they wouldn't ask that question. In relation to the uh, discussions, of course, those are led by Transport Scotland directly with the contractor for very good reason. I have had meetings with the contractor. I've had individual meetings with the different companies involved and discussion with them. And, of course, uh, uh, he mentioned the... the um, the letter from Balfour Beatty. We've had uh, meetings with Balfour Beatty recently. Perhaps the FOI which he lodged didn't capture those because the ones I'm referring to happened more, uh, more recently. But in relation to the completion date, of course, uh, the idea that um, this was a, a something which caught people by surprise. If you look at the House of Commons, uh, two committees which have been looking into this issue since the collapse of Carillon, he will have seen just as recently as I think three weeks ago, confirmation from ARL, the contractor, that they expected this project to complete on time. That is why I was surprised to see a public statement subsequently uh, bringing that to question. Not surprised because we'd had discussions with them about the nature of that uh, uh, challenge in terms of closing, but surprised to see that quickly followed by the statement that was made by ARL. But we've had very good discussions with ARL, but it is carried out, as you would expect, in the main between the Transport Scotland professionals and the companies involved. Lewis MacDonald to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Well, Balfour Beatty told the Cabinet Secretary that the completion date of late spring would not work, and he's now told Balfour Beatty that the completion date of late summer is too aggressive and will not work, and that we should expect completion before 
uh, by late autumn of this year. Does Mr. Brown recognize that the issue here is not just delay after delay from season to season. It is also the sense that nobody is in charge here, that there appears to be no communication between government and contractor except uh, under the pressure of events. Why is it that Balfour Beatty and the government are not having these conversations and comparing their notes on an ongoing basis? Can Mr. Brown commit today to coming once again to the Northeast? And he's been a number of times as this project has been delayed and delayed. But this time, can he come and can he deliver some absolute certainty to people in the Northeast as to when this road will be finished? Uh, because we have heard delay after delay up until now, and it is that absolute certainty which people most need. Cabinet Secretary. Hey, can I say, I don't think I've ever mentioned a date of spring next year uh, in any statement that I've made. Um, and he is right to say that, uh, as I've said in my statement, that uh, the contractor believes that it may be um, summer of this year. I think they've mentioned both uh, August and September. I'm trying to be as straightforward as I can by saying we've had that independently analysed by Transport Scotland. They think there are challenges. It's possible to do that. We will do all that we can to try and make sure that happens. But there are challenges, both in terms of how um, aggressive that programme is, also our concern to make sure that the safety of everyone involved is looked after as well, and there's no undue pressure on people working on the project. But also, there's not a great deal of contingency in that time. And it's for that reason, we think it's the prudent approach to say, we think that to get that contingency into the programme, late autumn, uh, of course, is a, a, a better time to put out uh, to the public. And that allows them to realise that's what the, the aim is here. If you can do it early, we'll certainly do it earlier. And uh, failing that, we expect it by late autumn. But can I say to uh, Lewis McDonald, of course, as you get closer towards the end of the project, it is possible to be more certain. And as soon as we can be as certain as we can about the completion date, I'm happy to come to the, the, the North East and to give that uh, date uh, to local stakeholders. And also, we will very shortly start to provide information on the uh, preparations for the opening of the road as well, because people expect to be able to factor that in. And of course, as soon as we can make those two things happen, we know the date on which it's going to open, we know the arrangements, we'll make sure that all local stakeholders are aware of that fact. Stuart Stevenson to be followed by John Finney. In the nearly 60 years that elapsed between 1948 that the Cabinet Secretary referred to and the SNP coming into government in 2007, there were Labour and Tory governments for roughly half the time, and indeed the Liberals were party uh, to government uh, up to 2007. At any point in that nearly 60 years' time, were any road orders brought forward by these parties or other material preparations made to actually cause an Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route yes. to be delivered? Yes. Keith Brown, Cabinet Secretary. I, I think uh, uh, Stuart Stevenson, it's implied in his question, knows about the absolute lack of progress that was made by the other parties during all the decades when they had the opportunity to take this project uh, forward. And of course, not a single inch of tarmac was laid uh, during the time of any of those uh, three parties. But he could have made the same point about the duelling of the A9, uh, or about the fact that we didn't even have a motorway between Edinburgh and Glasgow until very recently. So it's this government which has taken on these big, complex projects and is delivering for the people of Scotland. John Finney to be followed by Mike Rumbles. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I'd like to thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of his statement, which is called an update on major infrastructure projects. And I'd like to thank him for his very brief uh, update on travel between the Central Belt and uh, the Highlands. Uh, I'd also like to draw his attention to the Transport Scotland website, uh, which tells us that, uh, and I quote, detailed information on the necessary works are anticipated in 2017. Now, setting the grammar aside, um, we had the same message saying that in 2016, but of course that was not about the A9 uh, Cabinet Secretary, that was about what's missing from your update, that was about the Highland Main Line upgrade, grade, which has undoubtedly lost momentum. Now the Scottish Government are committed to low carbon infrastructure, and I'm not sure that it's fully appreciated how crowded the single track line is, and that knock-on delays seriously inconvenience many passengers, and that this happens almost every day. So we're going to move to a situation where four lanes of road and one lane of rail, considerably less than there were in Victorian times. We've wasted, Cabinet Secretary, almost five years of control period of five. There's only about 12 months left. When are we going to get an update on the Highland Main Line, please? Cabinet Secretary. 
Can I say that I, I don't agree? I think it's not been wasted at all. If you look at the investment we've had in terms of the railways, some of the new stations which have opened, the longest piece of new railway track in the UK in 100 years has been opened during that period. I think we've been investing at a huge level in terms, uh, in terms of the rail infrastructure. I, and, and the member quite rightly makes uh, the point about not the Highlands, uh, although there is work going on, of course, and the, the route also between Aberdeen and Inverness as well. Uh, but I think it's important to say we have trying to address quite a number of issues where there's been a lack of investment over the best part of a century in the rail network and we're doing as much as we can as quickly as we possibly can do it and of course the same is true in terms of our roads I don't see one as being isolated from the other we have to try and uh, do, do both in one previous uh, answer I remember saying that uh, buses and bicycles also very often travel on roads as well the roads network is very important so the two shouldn't be in isolation and of course the uh, the route that uh, the member refers to is the responsibility of my colleague uh, Hamza Youssef and I'm happy to get him to respond uh, to the member with an update and progress in relation to that. But I think we've got a very proud track record, both in terms of road and rail, in terms of investment in Scotland. Mike Rumbles to be followed by Kate Forbes. Presiding officer, isn't it strange that in a statement designed to give clarity to the opening of the much uh, delayed, repeatedly delayed AWPR, the Cabinet Secretary seems to have added much confusion in his statement today. So, is it opening during August, as he said it was, it was according to the contractor in his statement, is it opening at the end of summer, according to Transport Scotland, or is it opening in late autumn, according to the Cabinet Secretary's own advisers? That's what he's just said. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, all I can do is repeat what I've said. Is we expect this road to, to be open by late uh, autumn, and I've explained the reasons why the contractor thinks that they can do it by the summer. It's possible that could happen, of course. Uh, and also uh, some of the reasons why that's the case, why it's not happening in spring this year, for the reasons of the weather. Mike Rumbles will know better than me about the impact, for example, of Storm Frank. Uh, he will know better than me the impact of even recent weather and also about the impact in terms of Carillion for the supply chain that's uh, uh, vital to this contract. So for those reasons, yes, it's moved out from spring. The contract, I think, is possibly summer. I think it's prudent to talk about late autumn and if you can do it before that, then we will certainly try and achieve that. Kate Forbes to be followed by Peter Chapman. Kate Forbes. Thank you. I appreciate the Cabinet Secretary's update on the A9 duelling programme, which is good news for many Highland residents that have waited decades for a decent road. There are, of course, two arteries to the Highlands, including the A82. And with government commitments to invest in improving both roads, does this prove how important it is for the government to continue investing in the A82 and the A9? Cabinet Secretary. I think it not only proves that point, but also proves the lack of investment that has been over far too long a period by previous governments. So this government wants to see improvements to the roads infrastructure in the Highlands to help support Scotland's economy and to better connect our cities and communities. And it's why we are committed to pressing ahead with a major programme of works to duel the A9 between Perth and Inverness by 2025. The A96, as I mentioned, between um, Inverness and Aberdeen, and also other roads which the member will be very familiar with in terms of Tarbert to Inverarnon, as well on the A82, including the some of the work that we've already done in terms of the Korean Larrick bypass. So I think it's very important, as with the Borders Railway, that all parts of Scotland get the benefit of investment, investment which they've been starved of for too long under previous governments. Peter Chapman to be followed by Gail Ross. Presiding officer, this road has been a catalogue of errors for a long time now, and, more, and none more so than the most northern link of this road, the Belmidi Tipperty section. And I can tell the Cabinet Secretary, unlike what he said in answer to my colleague Dean Lockhart, this northern section was absolutely promised to open in spring 2017. It is still not open, which it means it is now a whole year overdue. Yep. Is the Cabinet Secretary seriously saying that even this section won't be open until late summer or late autumn? And will he now apologise to the residents of the North East who have had to put up with this severe disruption to their lives? for much longer than expected. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I think, uh, of course, uh, we have always said and readily acknowledged that any major infrastructure projects of this type uh, do cause disruption. We try to minimise that whenever we can. But the member is quite right. He may also, like Jackie Bailey, have not been around in 1948, but that's when his predecessors in the Conservative Party and Jackie Bailey's predecessors in the Labour Party started talking about this. And I'm sure that people can remember in 1983 when the Lib Dems talked about it as well. So the member will also be aware, of course, of the legal history of this project and some 
some of the delays caused by that. So as soon as we've been able to get through that legal process, we have moved forward with the project starting in 2014. So I know that it's taken longer than we expected. I readily concede that point. I do also regret the fact that there's been disruption associated with it. That's true for most uh, projects. But we will crack on and try and get this road done, certainly far faster than any previous party has committed to doing it. I'm conscious that we're just out of time on this as well, but I'll squeeze the last two questions in if they just ask a question. Short answer. James Kelly. Presiding officer, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if he's going to correct the cost estimate of £745 million? It's clearly incorrect given the extended timescales and also the legal challenges involved and uh, substantial costs that are involved. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, no, I don't. The £745 million expected uh, the budget for that is still expected to be the cost. Of course, it, as the member points out, it can change, but I'm happy to provide the member with any details. But there's no change to that budget resulting from the changes which I've announced in terms of the, uh, the time taken to complete the project. The contractors are the ones that are responsible. That's the way the contract is written for taking on the costs of this delay. Apologies. I skipped past Gail Ross there. Gail Ross. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what progress there is on the procurement of the contract to deliver the A9 trunk road improvements at Burradale Brays and whether Transport Scotland will be reviewing availability of parking places on the A9 between Inverness and Caithness, which is used by both road freight and tourism traffic? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, uh, yes, I'm happy to do that and apologies for not having done so before uh, to Gail Ross, although I did uh, undertake to do so I think last week. So the Berriedale Brace, again another long-standing project which wasn't taken forward by previous governments. Uh, Transport Scotland commenced dialogue on the 26th of February 2018 with four bidders, although one bidder has withdrawn in the last week. The contract is expected to be awarded in late summer with work commencing soon after. And Transport Scotland are members of course of the North Coast 500 Working Group and that group identified a need to review, as Gail Ross asked, parking opportunities along the route and Transport Scotland have commissioned a review of the A9 between Inverness and Caithness to identify, identify if there are opportunities for increased parking facilities for all road users including tourists and commercial vehicles which could also have the potential to provide locations for slower moving vehicles to pull in and to allow others to pass. Thank you and very briefly Richard Lockett. Uh, can I welcome the approachability of Transport Scotland in terms of the consultation process for the Hardmuir to Fockerbers section of the A96? And will the Cabinet Secretary give some thought to how the co-creative process could be used going forward to make sure the community uh, have an even bigger role uh, in shaping the road? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, of course, the co-creative process that the member refers to is being used for the first time, actually, in any major project in relation to the A9, and it has been a great way to uh, make sure that we have the maximum possible community engagement, especially on issues which can be quite difficult in terms of the options which the uh, people developing the project have to take forward. So we have made the offer, I think, previously in answer to Gillian Martin, we've made the offer that that process could be available to other groups as well, and, of course, we're happy to follow that through in relation to the A96 project. Thank you very much to the Cabinet Secretary and members.